Hello YouTube, I'm Arn Peter, and today I would like to talk to you about prime number generation algorithms. I made a tutorial about how to make a GUI for a uh, prime number generation about a year and a half ago, and back then I promised I would make this tutorial explaining the actual algorithms behind it. So here it is. So um, let's see, my enthusiasm for prime number generation algorithms stems from way back when when I was learning Java, and I was trying this programming challenge, which I have pulled up here. It basically asks how many prime numbers are there below 10 to the 7th. So we want, we, want, we want to write a program to do this. So um, let, me, let me tell you how I did it first off. So this is just isn't actual code, this is pseudocode. So the way I thought of it was, all right, so we want to loop through all the numbers and test each one of them, right? So, you know, a loop. All right, we have a loop. And on each iteration of the loop, we want to test whether the number is prime. So uh, for those of you that no don't know, the definition of a prime number is that it is not div divisible by anything other than itself and 1. So basically, we need to loop through all the numbers below the number we're testing. And if there's anything below it that's other than 1 that's that will divide into it, then we know that our number is not prime. So right now we'll have another loop in here to do that alrighty uh, I actually need to make a few changes here so for we want to actually start I from 2 because that's the first prime number um, and for J we want to start it off from also 2 because if we start off from 1 yeah it'll be divisible but that just means prime because 1 doesn't count and start off from 0 we'll get a division by 0 error which we don't really want that all right, so now basically to check whether it's prime, each time before we do this whole loop, we're going to assume that it's prime. So we're going to set prime equal to true. And then if we find a number that will divide into it, so you know, if i percent j is equal to zero, then we know that it's not prime because we found a number that's not it's not i because i isn't part of this loop and it's not one because one is not part of this loop so we found a number that will divide into i which means that it's not prime because we found a number that divides into it so prime equals false and then down here we can kind of pronounce our result depending on what language you're in doesn't really matter we just say print um I I think that's how the notation goes. All right. Well, anyway, you get the idea. So we can print out pr whether it's prime or not depending on whether we found something that divides into it. Okay. So um, I just wrote this up real quick. This isn't supposed to work or anything. But this is actually a very terrible way of doing it because if you imagine, let's see. So I guess for i equals 0, or i equals 2, I suppose, this loop goes through 0 iterations. For i equals 3, this loop goes through 1 iteration. i equals 4, it goes through 2 iterations, and it goes on and on and on until you know i equals 10 to the 7th, where we go through about 10 to the 7th iterations. So this goes through several million iterations. Well, I'd say this probably goes through over 100 million iterations. It's, it's very, very, it's a very inefficient way of doing it. So basically, I made the program, but I'll proud of myself. I made the prime number generation program. I ran it and it took hours and hours and hours. So um, what I did was I posted on a forum. And I said, hey, can someone help me how to make this more efficient? And somebody started helping me with it. And we, we, we did several uh, little tricks. Like, for instance, once you find it as prime, you can break out of the, of the loop. And another thing is you don't have to increment by one each time. Because, you know, once you tested two, you don't need to test four or six or eight. You, you don't need to test any more even numbers because those would have all been removed by two. So you can kind of do this whole thing where you uh, increase j by two type deal and then you just test two on its own. So 
I think throughout the whole time, you know, we did it, we did it through several iterations of this algorithm, try to make little fixes, and we managed to get it from, I don't know, like, um, 10 hours to, like, 7 hours, or maybe 5 hours, and, you know, we just, we'd run it overnight and see if we can get the right answer, and it was, it was quite a pain. So, then, the thing, that, the cool part is, somebody else posted on the forum and said, hey, I made an algorithm which solves it in 3 seconds, like, oh my gosh, three seconds, and I looked at his code and it seemed it seemed to work, and I said, wow, that's amazing. And he said, oh, uh, it's not that big of a deal. It's actually called the Sieve C- of Eratosthenes, which I probably mispronounced. But anyway, that's a brilliant algorithm made by some Greek guy years and years ago, um, which works brilliantly for this. So that's what we'll be talking about today. Alrighty, so here's the Wikipedia page explaining it. And I think that's a fairly good job. Um, let me refresh the page to kind of restart this animation. And why? Okay, apparently refreshing it doesn't actually restart it. All right, well, I'll have to wait. Okay, start start with two. And then once you've determined two is your prime number, you mark off everything that there's a by two. So, you know, you increase by two and continually mark them off. So now we've determined that all of these light red ones are not prime. Do the same thing with three, increment by three, and everything that's divisible by three is not prime. Five, everything that's divisible by five is not prime. So, and now, after you go through a few iterations of that, you see that you're quickly gaining a bunch of prime numbers. Okay, see that? So, basically, with every prime number, you're eliminating all kinds of possibilities. Yeah, eliminating all kinds of possibilities, and eventually, all you have left in your grid is prime numbers. So, it works very well, because it you don't waste any time, really, for non-prime numbers. There is some looping involved with prime numbers, but you don't, um, that's not as bad, I guess. Because after all, there are a lot, there are a lot more non-prime numbers than there are prime numbers. So, we're saving a lot of time. Alright, so, um, we're going to write this in proper code. I have this in Java right here, which, but of course you can do it whichever language you would like. I probably could have written it in C++ if I wanted to, but Java is just the one I'm most comfortable with. So, we're going to do it in Java. So let's make this grid. So we're just going to have a array, which doesn't really have to be a grid, just sort of like a single dimensional array. So boolean um, uh, primes, I suppose we'll call it, e equals new boolean. And then we got to kind of decide from beforehand what our length is going to be. So that way, when we're marking things off the list, our numbers know how far they need to search. So we're going to make a 10 to the 7th plus 1. So 10 to the seventh, so that's seven zeros. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I'm gonna add one. Or I'll just go do it like that. Um, the reason I'm adding one is because I want um, the I want to be able to look up the tenth seventh index. Whereas if I want to actually be able to look up, I want that to work. But in Java, most languages when you define it, this is how the length. And since it's zero based, this wouldn't work. The large still go is one minus that. So I'm adding one for this reason. Okay, so we want to initialize this. So we're going to start off with basically all them being true, but we're, we'll 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 let let a zero and one be false because no, they're not primes. Sorry. So zero is going to be false, and one is going to be false. And this is just initializing array. I suppose I could bump that up there. All right. So we got the first two set to false, and now we want to set all the rest to true. So you guessed it, we're going to do a loop. i equals two, i less than the length of our array, and i plus plus. And then we can set each one to true. Bam, okay. All right, so now we can do our actual algorithm. So, like last time, we're going to loop through all of our um, numbers. Primes dot length. I'm thinking right now that maybe there was a way I could have, you know, not had to loop through it twice, and I could have compounded this, but oh well. All right, so loop each one. For each one, we're going to first check if prime, and then, if so, mark off factors of i. So. We, uh, for the first one, two, we say is two prime, yes, and then we mark off everything at this by two. So we mark off 
uh, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, all of them. So, um, it's fairly simple to check what's prime. We can look into our array, and basically, that's all we need to do. So, if, yeah, basically, if the R index of the array is true, then it's it's prime. I guess I'll make another variable saying call num prime. Because after all, the whole I stem of this problem was find out how many primes are less than 10 to the seventh. Is it less than or less than equal less than equal to? Let's find that out. That are below 10 to the seventh. Okay, so I guess I technically didn't need to do that. Oh one, but oh well. Okay, so we got num primes plus plus. We have a new prime that we've found, and now we go ahead and mark off all the rest of them. So this will be another loop. J equals i times two, because um, you know if two is prime, so the next one after that that divisible by two is two, um, is two times two, or you know two plus two doesn't really matter. And likewise, when we go when we hit five, the next number that divisible by five is five plus five or five times two. Yeah. Okay, and we'll keep going as long as j is less than our primes dot length and then j plus equals i. So in order to keep finding numbers that are divisible by 2 in this in this first case, we're going to keep adding by 2. So, you know, 4, 6, 8, 10. And if we have 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, that's, that's why we're adding by i each time. Hmm. All right. And then for each one of those, we're going to mark it off our list. So we're going to say primes j equals false. And I believe that's our whole algorithm. So you might be wondering why is this so much better? Because you know we still have a loop within a loop. Well, the thing is, this loop is only running when our number is prime. All right. So if I look up the prime number theorem, I spelled theorem wrong. All right. Um, Importantly speaking, the prime number theorem states that if a random integer is selected in the range. The probability of the select number being prime is about one over the natural log of n. Okay, uh, so number of primes below n is natural log of n. So you know, I take ten to the power of seven. The prime number theorem states that the number of prime numbers roughly below that is equal to uh, the natural log. Where is that? Let me grab a physical calculator. All right, so you guys just have to take your word, take my word for it. Then I'm looking this up. Okay, or I can Google it. Actually, let's do it that way instead. What's the natural log of ten? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, sixteen. Doesn't seem right. Okay, I got it wrong. So it says the average gap between consecutive prime numbers is roughly that. So. If the average gap between prime numbers is this, then that means that if we take what 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 divided by 16.118, then that says that there's that many prime numbers. All right, okay, that's more like it. So we're still going through a lot of iterations, but it's not as bad because after all, we are only testing about 1 in 16 numbers. Okay? And this loop doesn't go through each one. See, because we have that plus i. So it's done optimally. All right, so now we can do system.out.println num primes. All right, so that will print out answer. And just for our, um, just for us, let's have it also print out every time we find another prime number. I. All right, let's try this out, and this should work. So let me go ahead and head to my desktop where I have this saved. Okay, it's not located under there for for something because something I did a while back. Okay, so now I can see primes. There we go. So I compile it, and let's see if we got any errors. Ah, despite years of experience. Um. <laughs> okay, I didn't. It didn't actually screw that data type. We probably could have gotten away with int, but I'm going to go and put long to be safe. Oh, I didn't do boolean array. That's what happens when you're on camera. 
Ah, okay. That wasn't too bad. Um, Alright, now let's run it. Java Primes. Alright, we're going to go ahead and assume that that's correct. Let's see, we're not anywhere close to 10 million. Alright, um, I'm going to go ahead and comment that out because after all the printing statements take up a whole lot of time. Java C primes that Java. Java primes. See, very quickly, as I said. Um, which wouldn't have happened had I been using my first algorithm. Um, let me make sure I got everything right. Okay, this is going from. No, that should work. Okay. All right. Um, let's see if I got it right. So over here, if I go ahead and log in. I'm going to cut to already having logged in, so you don't guess. So having logged in, it shows the answer is that, which you should. Yes, it does match up. Cool. So, now you know. Let's go ahead and make this somewhat more reasonable so we can we can kind of get a better sense of what's happening. And I'll, I'll take put this back in. Primes. All right. So this will show us all the prime numbers below 10. So 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23. Yeah, look. Brilliant. All right. <clears throat> this has been my tutorial on prime number generation. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in a future tutorial. Bye-bye.